Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solano Gymnasium. You are watching the Solano College Sports Network, and tonight we have for you some, some exciting men's basketball action where the visiting Merritt T-Birds take on your Solano Falcons. Joining me in the broadcast booth today is Marvell Bluford and Anthony Williams. Guys, let's get right into some keys to the game. Marvell, Merritt won last game in, in Oakland against Solano. What is some things that Merritt has to do to win this game here at Solano? Well, once again, Merritt's going to have to make sure that they shoot the ball correctly and that they out-rebound uh, the Solano Falcons and just play an overall good game of basketball. Yeah, and Merritt's lineup is up and down, very consistent. Five players averaging double figures. And Anthony, that's a tough task for Solano. So what does Solano have to do to come out victorious today? Solano, they need to make smart shots and just get in the hole. As you can see, they shot a 41% from the field, which is horrible, but they did get to the line a lot of times and shot 80%. So that is a good thing. They just need to get to the hole more and knock down their free throws. And that last game against Merritt in Oakland, only Corey Cox really had a good game, making 13 of 15 free throws, leading them with 25 points. So let's see if Solano can have a more balanced attack here at home. And typically at home, you see a better bench production. So another key to the game for Solano is their bench and a whole team effort. So the starters for Merritt are number one, Trayvon King, number three, Javante Carlton, number 11, Ronnie Pope, 22, DJ Kennedy, and number five, Anthony Tabor, as they win the tip-off. For Solano, it's going to be Donovan Smith, LeJean Sewell, Corey Cox, Kyle Osterstock, and Andre Usher. So guys, they're going big tonight. So you see Kennedy dribble to his right, lay the ball up, and that's good. So Solano's def definitely going to have to have a little bit better defense than that. you got to rotate quickly and cover uh, the man. So let's see if Solano can't get something rolling on offense. Their first possession, LeJean Sewell passes it to Corey Cox in the corner. Merritt opening with the zone. Usher out to Cox in the corner. He drives, lays the ball up, off the backboard. No good. Andre Usher with the offensive rebound. Out to Donovan Smith for three. And it's good. So good sign for Solano. Donovan Smith hitting his first three point. And if Devin Smith can keep getting wide open like that and down those threes, Solano has a very strong chance of winning this game. Yes, that was a great shot by Mr. Smith. He can be very deadly from the three point line when he has a hot game. So Donovan Smith. It's always a good sign when he hits his first shot. You can anticipate a roll from him. So Merrick going all the way to the hole. Javante Carlton with a nice take and layup. And once again, Solano, they're just not rotating fast enough to cover the free man. You can't allow easy shots like that. Yeah, that was horrible defense. So Solano should pick it up a little bit better on defense. They came out with his own look. So was Merritt with a 3-2 zone. Smith drives too hard off the backboard and rebounded by Kennedy. Kennedy pushes himself, passes it to the corner, but Solano guarding the man in the corner. So Carlton gonna reset up top. Pope guarded by Donovan Smith. Back over to Carlton. DJ Kennedy guarded by Andre Usher, the big center, usually coming off the bench, but starting here tonight because of the length of Merritt. Open three-pointer for Carlton. It is off back iron, but is rebounded by Tabor, and they get another possession. Some great rebounding by uh, the Merritt Thunderbirds right now, keeping the play alive. And that lob attempt is no good, but Andre Usher tries to block it, but he fouls the shooter, Trayvon King, so he'll go to the line for an opportunity for three. They, need, they definitely need to rebound more because the Merritt Thunderbirds are definitely big down low, and... They need the size and rebounding to defeat them. And Merritt on the year averages 39 rebounds per game compared to only Solano, who averages just 24.5. So Merritt's size, really a factor. Marvell, we look up and down the roster, you see size everywhere. I do. I do. A lot of 6'7", six, 6'5", six, guys. And in community college basketball, that's a difference, especially on the boards. And their athleticism really bothers a shorter Solano team. So Sewell into the post to Osterstock. Back out to Sewell. He drives, passes it to Osterstock. Nice give and go. Excellent communication between the Falcons. Yes, Osterstock was definitely waiting for that one down low. 
So good two-man game from Sewell and Ostersock being on the same page. That's good sign for Solano. Communicating out there on the court. So in the post is Tabor. Out to Carlton. Carlton with the corner jumper. Rebounded by Sewell. Even though they didn't make the shot, that was a beautiful ball movement, Brian. That was, and ball movement is another area that Merritt is strong at. They are a very good team at 17 and 6 on the year. As Corey Cox gets it in the corner, passes out to Sewell. Around to Donovan Smith for the deep three. And is off front of the rim and rebounded. And out on the break is DJ Whoop. Kennedy. Go all the way to the hole, fouled. Not able to make the layup, but good, strong take from Kennedy. You know, going back to that previous play, it's always good when uh, when number three, Donovan Smith, gets the three. But one of his problems is sometimes he is a little bit too far out and he needs to bring it in some and not just shoot the deep ball all the time. Yeah, Smith definitely has the range, but that one just a little too far. If he was about to step in, that would have been a good swish. In the most definitely, point most definitely. Yes, he has. He kind of had a J.R. Smith moment <laughs> right there. I mean, hey, maybe he heard us talking about how was, uh, his first shot being made is a good start for him. He was feeling <laughs> a little bit, a little too early for a heat chat with 16.45 left in this first half. But we'll see if Solano can't get something more efficient on offense. So... In the zone, Merritt stays with a 3-2 zone. Cox out to Sewell in the corner. He drives to his right. Stripped away by Merritt. Drives, and that is thrown out of bounds. So Merritt not able to capitalize on that fast break. And one of the things about that whole play is Corey Cox had to secure that ball. You can't have easy turnovers like that. That will definitely lose you the game. You're going to make sure you get the ball and move on and not lose it the way, like, uh, the way he did. So lucky bounce there for Solano, I would say. So no damage, no harm, no foul. Very lucky indeed. But those turnovers against a talented Merritt team won't fly. So Donovan Smith now has the ball into the to Sewell, out to Ostersock for three, and it is off the back of the rim and rebounded, fight for the ball, is going towards Merritt. Right now Merritt, the Merritt Thunderbirds are playing some very good defense forcing the Solano Falcons to pass, pass, and uh, pass it to their uh, center, who can hit the long ball, but you want to see him more inside in uh, Osterstock. Yes, that was great. It was good ball movement, though, so you have to give Solano that. But they definitely need to get in the paint more and stop shooting a whole bunch of threes. And good drive there from Javante Carlton. They're going to count the basket. And right now, Carlton showing some great athleticism right now. Getting to the hole at will against Long, even though they're playing a rather big lineup. JT Robinson not starting the smaller forward, and they're starting Andre Usher, their tallest member of the Solano Falcons. So Cox has the ball over to Sewell. They swing the ball around to Smith. He drives a nice pass to Usher, but not able to hit the little flip shot. Got to aim for that backboard. Yeah, you got to finish stronger than that, Andre, Andre Usher. So you can't just lob it up there in this game. You definitely got to aim for that square just to get shots like that. So Another easy turnover by the Falcons right now. So substitution for Merritt, Denzel Bellett, and for Solano, Tim Moore. So a couple forwards checking into the game. Right now, if I were the Solano Falcons, I would maybe try to drive it in and draw the foul just yeah. to get kickstart a little bit. That's something that this lineup can do. LeJean Sewell, Corey Cox, the games we have done here at Solano, they've been able to do that as Rodney Pope hits the jumper, the long jumper. That was lazy defense by the Falcons. So now Tim Moore flashes to the middle. That's a nice offensive play from Tim Moore. That's what you have to do in that zone defense, flash toward the middle, get an easy bucket as Solano fouls yet again. So within the first five minutes or so, Solano has committed four team fouls while Merritt has yet to uh, commit a foul. Right now, if I'm the coach, I'm possibly thinking of taking a timeout just to calm my players down, you know, let them reinvent themselves so they can come out a lot better because right now they're not looking very good. Yes, that would be the best move right now for them, Marvell. And they definitely need to talk about stop stopping the ball from getting in a hole more. So now JT Robinson checking in for LeJean Sewell, so getting a little bit more size for Solano with Donovan Smith and JT Robinson in the backcourt with Tim Moore, Corey Cox, and Osterstock in the front as Denzel Bellett goes and hits the second free throw, so one of two. So it's 14-7 with 14.55 left in the first half. 
And Merritt having pretty good success with this 3-2 zone look. Slalom not able to respond so far. Corey Cox for the three in the corner. Rebounded by Osterstock, so nice offensive rebounding for Slalom so far. Smith for three, and that's good. That's more in his range. And that's the thing about the Solano Falcons right now. If they can secure these rebounds against uh, the Merritt Thunderbirds, then they have a very good shot of coming back into this game. Because one of the things about Devin Smith is he's an ex he's an excellent catch and shooter when it comes to the three. And he's a great rebounder, skying to get that rebound over Trayvon King. And the fast break gets it over to Tim Moore. Tim Moore too strong off the front of the rim. After although, the side they, of the rim. although they missed that easy layup, that was very good uh, communication skills uh, for Devin Smith, stopping and uh, finding the wide open man. Oh. Yeah. Just got to capitalize on those easy points. Yes, you definitely have to capitalize on the easy points. but it, it. Robinson takes it strong and off of the rim, but offensive rebound by Donovan Smith, but gets his pocket picked. Got to pay attention to your surroundings. Kennedy up, too strong, rebounded by Smith. Definitely got to pay attention to, to your surroundings. So Donovan Smith, after all that activity, is still a 14-10 game. So Cox over, cross court to JT Robinson. Back to Cox in the post. Smith up top for three. And it is off the back of the rim, so he's two for four to start out yeah. from three-point range. They have too many people out on the three-point line, and there's only one person in the paint versus Merritt. They have three people in the paint, and they're, bo they're boxing out well. So they are most likely to get the rebound. But Solano, they definitely need to get more people in the paint so they can rebound more and have better opportunities at offensive rebounds. Right. right now, we might want to see a little bit of uh, Corey Cox getting into the game a little bit better right now. He's struggling to find his shot, and now he's heading to the bench. <laughs> so <laughs> he'll have to do that next time he comes out on the court. Right now, if I'm Corey Cox, I take a deep breath, kind of get myself right mentally, think about what I can do better, and get back into this game. So Merritt. Because we've seen in previous games, he can put up points and help this team get a victory. Merritt had a couple substitutions with Mike McAllister checking in along with Oliver Roger Lubemba. While well, Solano has now Joe Sean Snell and Jesse Carrion. Right now we're seeing too much pass pass uh, for the Solano Falcons. They're trying to get that perimeter shot, but they need to get in. And that, caught, that passing led to a turnover for Tim Moore. Shuffled his feet before he started making his move. Yeah. Way too much passing. Yeah, he forgot to put the ball on the ground that time. But Solano, they had, like I said, they have too many people out on the three-point line, and they're not moving. So it's hard to find an open shot if you're not moving. One thing that I've noticed about college basketball, it's very nice to always hit the threes and stuff. But, you know, it's not the NBA. You don't have to live and die by the three. And right now, the Solano Falcons, they do have excellent three-point shooters such as Devin Smith, but we might want to see them take it to the, uh, the rim right now. Yeah, some driving ability from Corey Cox or LeJean Sewell. That would be a recipe for Solano to be successful. And with this timeout, what do you think Coach Nagel's talking to his guys about? Well, right now, he's telling his team, Take a deep breath, calm down, and we need to capitalize on easy points, and we need to out, or they need to out-rebound this uh, Merritt team. Yes, nope. yes, and um, he's probably most likely talking about defense, how they need to stop the ball from getting in the paint and um, defense, re rebound on the defense side more. Because we've seen some pretty impressive offensive rebounding so far. That's not really Solano's M.O., but... The defensive rebounding is where they're going to have to pick things up, especially with this smaller lineup because they started Andre Usher and Kyle Osterstock, their starting center and backup center. So in the game right now is Jesse Carey playing the five with Tim Moore at the four. So rebounding even more important at this point in the game. So Lubemba with a good post move, but hit is just short. Rebounded by Merritt, and the ball out of bounds. Towards Solano, so good pressure on Denzel Excellent Bellet. defense that we saw from Solano right there. Very good defense com coming off of the timeout. So whatever Coach Nagel said to his guys, they responded very well, caused the turnover off of that offensive rebound. Now the game is Sewell in the backcourt with Snell, with JT Robinson, Tim Moore, and Jesse Carey. 
Let's see if there's a little bit more movement. They're cutting more towards the paint, so that's a good sign. But JT Robinson, just like Tim Moore a couple plays ago, moved his feet before he dribbled the ball. And those are the kind of plays that get you right back on the bench. I look for him to move on from that. But these guys got to remember, dribble first, then take the step. And that's a common occurrence we see in community college basketball at least every single game. We'll see that a couple times from both sides of the courts from both teams. So Merritt swings the ball around to Rodney Pope in the corner for three. Rebound and the dunk from Javante Carlton. And that was a good heads up play by Javante Carlton because no one had looked back. He snatched the ball up and got the easy dunk. Yeah, yes, that's what happens when you don't box out. And you can see the offense will have opportunities like that if Solano doesn't box out more. And now Merritt swarming JT Robinson. They get bailed out with a foul on Rodney Pope. But, man, Javante Carlton's athleticism really a stamp for Merritt on the offensive end so far. He has six points, six other 16 with 11.09 left. That's only Merritt's first team foul. So with that, their defense can be even more aggressive. But speaking of aggressive, JT Robinson's aggressive layup, not good. So Merritt on the counterattack, laid up and in by Rodney Pope. Ooh, that was a beautiful Euro step right there. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the Mano Ginobili Euro step. And now Merritt with a little full court press. And right now we're seeing the turnover. Right now, we're not seeing any communication between the players of this Solano Falcons team. Yeah, they came out, they played good defense on that first possession after the timeout, but these last two possessions, no type of communication and continuous uh, turning the ball over. Yeah, definitely. You're supposed to tell the ball carrier that, that um, he's about to be trapped or there's a trap coming. You know, you have to communicate in ways. Basketball is all about communication. Especially in that point of the game where Merritt hadn't, gone with the full court press all game all of a sudden they pressure the ball handler and they get a turnover so Solano he's pick up the communication and as a communication major I can tell you communication is pretty important <laughs> so ball is cross court over to Bellet Bellet over to Kennedy drives kicks it over into the corner for three McAllister not able to hit it but an offensive rebound by Kennedy Unable to put it back up and in, and there's Tim Moore with a good rebound. And he is off on a three on two break, and he is fouled going to the rim. He kind of looked like James Harden right there. <laughs> the lefty coming all the way the down lefty, the court. Yes. <laughs> and a little subtlety to that play. Snell did a good job of stopping where he was, and it sort of picked, it was a natural pick action on the Merritt defender, allowed Tim Moore to get some space in the open court, and allowed him to get that uh, drive opportunity. Yes, that was a great move by Snell. Um, like you said, Brian, it is a pick. It's more of a natural pick. That way you don't have to really sacrifice your body or take one to the chest. It's like, you know, like you just sidestep and hope that the, <laughs> the, that the defender sees you and moves out your way. Yeah, just, just get in the way. Just, yes. you, don't, you don't have to be a, a statue up there. You, <laughs> can, you can just get in people's way. I now that we see... Now that we see Corey Cox and Devin Smith getting back to the game, hopefully that'll Joe Donovan Smith, excuse me, Donovan Smith getting back in the game. Hopefully this it energizes this Solano Falcons team offensively, and they'll do much better. So Mike McAllister feeling the pressure from Solano defense, and again Trayvon King with a strong move, so he'll go to the line for another three-point opportunity. And, and what was wrong with that play is. When you play, when a person drives the ball in towards you, you don't grab the player, just stick your hands up and see if you can uh, get the offensive foul. You don't have to reach in and grab. Yes. So King not able to hit the free throw, rebounded by Donna Smith. Good box out by Corey. And that's very important in this game with the size of Merritt. Corey Cox boxing out his... Uh, we see an excellent press from the Thunderbirds right now. We've seen that all evening long from the Thunderbirds. And on the floor, there's a foul on Tim Moore. So Tim Moore not going to go to the line. That was on the floor. So it's the third team foul for Merritt. Solano has five at this point of the game with Merritt up 20 to 12. Going to come into the game will be Andre Usher. Yes, I think they're trying to get more size down low, bringing in Usher. 
Usher is the tallest member of the Solano Falcons at center, big number 50. And Solano and not able to communicate again. And again, the turnovers. If you want to get back in this game, you cannot have turnovers like that. And again, Corey Cox cannot hold on to the ball. So Merritt on the offensive end with DJ Kennedy. Over to McAllister now, has the ball. So Solano playing man defense. JT Robinson on his man. Andre Usher, nice pick at the ball. Scramble for the ball. Merritt puts it up and in. So that scramble drill ended up in favor of Merritt with McAllister. And right now that was still an embarrassed that was an embarrassing defense for the Solano Falcons. You can't have two guys right there and Merritt still able to get the shot. But Corey Cox on the other end doing what he does and gets to the foul line. And hope, hopefully now that he can get these two easy shots and he makes them, that might kickstart him. And we'll see a lot better offense from him yes, in last this game. Last game, Corey Cox got to the free throw line 15 times and made 13 out of them. So getting to the line would definitely do him great right now and hopefully boost his confidence up. Corey, by percentage, is the third leading free throw shooter on the Solano Falcons at 78%, but he gets there more often than Osterstock and Smith, who shoot over 80. So I would say Cox would be the go-to free throw shooter on the team as he hits two. So 22-14, still an eight-point game with 8.40 approaching. McAllister being hounded by Donovan Smith. DJ Kennedy guarded by Corey Cox. Gets the screen from Trayvon King. Out to McAllister. And he decides not to take that three after Andre Asher closes out on him. Good backdoor cut and in from Denzel Bellett. And the difference we're seeing between the Falcons and the Thunderbirds is the Thunderbirds are able to communicate with each other. Always making eye contact. And it's almost like, uh, I believe the word is uh, telepathic. Yeah. It's like they're all on the same bra uh, brain waves. waves. Yeah. And they're just able to communicate so much better and make easy shots like that. And that kind of communication really shows in the stat sheet when Mayor averages twice as many assists as Solano does on the year. As Corey Cox drives and draws a foul. So Corey Cox, good strong move, goes back to the line. Yes, he may be having another 15 um, free throw performance tonight. You'd like to see that from Corey. Corey, not afraid of a little contact driving into the, the lane with multiple defenders at him? No, definitely not. Um, back in his Rodriguez days, I used to see a lot of that, of him getting to the hole, and he's definitely not afraid of contact. And right now, I kind of I kind of like what I'm seeing from the Falcons. Not so much relying heavily on the three-point shot. They're starting to just take the ball in and draw the defensive fouls and get these easy points. Very smart trying to come back into this game. And Corey hits both free throws, so the lead sticks with eight after they trade a bucket for a couple free throws. DJ Kennedy drives, passes it into McAllister, out to Bellett. Bellett gets a foul on Andre Usher. Usher just a little bit late getting there, trying to draw a foul, try to draw a charge. Yeah, just a little bit too late. If he would have got there a little bit early, then he definitely would have got the offensive foul. So now back into the game is Javante Carlton. So from Merritt, they have Carlton, Bellett, McAllister, Trayvon King in the game. So Sewell checking in for... Tim Moore. So we got a smaller backcourt with Sewell and Smith, Robinson, Cox, and Osterstock. And this is the starting lineup we've seen uh, before from Solano. So this lineup is both good offensively and hopefully defensively on this trip. So King in the post. Nice move to get around. Osterstock draws a foul and one. So it's third opportunity for an and one. And yeah. right now, the uh, Thunderbirds are kind of picking on Osterstock because, you know, his defense, he did have his hands up, but you have to have your hands up and you also have to move your body and not allow the man to get past you. That was a little bit lazy on his part. Yes, that was a nice move by Mr. King, taking it to the basket. But at that point, when he first caught it in the post, Solano there is supposed to trap 
King uh, when he captures the ball because they had three three people around him. They definitely would have got the trap and maybe a jump ball or a steal. So Merritt gets the offensive rebound, but good defense from JT Robinson knocking it off the defender, uh, the offensive player's legs, DJ Kennedy. So turnover from Solano after King not able to hit that free throw. So very lazy pass by Donovan Smith as Kennedy drives all the way but cannot hit the layup, so numbers for Solano. Donovan Smith to Corey Cox, lays it up and out, but Sewell with the put back and the foul. And I was gonna say, somewhere there was a foul on that play. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be um, the foul when Corey, yeah. when Corey shot the ball, but at least they got a foul. <laughs> Little bit uh, late on the whistle. But hey, I, that worked out to Solano's favor because Sewell was able to get that rebound, put it back in. So instead of two free throws, you made the shot, now you get a shot for one more point. And it's good communication like that that allows you to get back into a game. So Sewell trying to capitalize, hit the free throw, and he does. So 26 to 19 with 7.05 left. And one of the th uh, things about this game that are keeping Solano in is their free throw shooting. Very good. Yeah, that's I don't think a single player has missed one yet. One of the strengths for the team is definitely their free throw shooting. Like we mentioned earlier, Smith over 80%. Osterstock over 80%. Cox gets in line a lot. She's over 78%. So timeout from Merritt with 6.49 left in the game. 26 to 19 Merritt leads. Guys, first half so far, up and down play from Solano. You know, at times they'll come back down maybe nine or eight points, and then they come back, and then, you know, the communication, they have to have better communication. They have to be aware of their uh, surroundings and not just give up the ball so easily. And they ha when they take it to the hole, they got to use that backboard to knock down those easy, uh, easy shots. We saw a couple times the uh, ball was just lobbed up there or just kind of thrown up there with no type of accuracy. And, you know, inevitably the shot didn't go down. And it's easy to kind of pick on some of the negatives, but let's give some credit to Merritt. Merritt's playing good team basketball. They, right now they're showing some good communication. They're out rebounding. You know, I, I wasn't there for the last game against Solano, but right now they're showing that, Merritt is showing that they're still a dominant team, and they're definitely using their height. Yes, Merritt, they are definitely playing physical right now, and they, they are just more active than Solano right now, but Solano, they are doing good, only being down seven points. So we'll see what they do for the rest of the half. Yeah, in that game against Merritt, they were down by 16 at the half, so cutting that to seven, it's an, it's an improvement. You definitely so. see the improvement. Yeah. yeah, it's more than half the points. So. Yeah. And, you know, we, you know I, I say a lot of negatives about Solano, but like you guys said, these guys are only down seven points, and the mistakes that I'm pointing out are mistakes that can be easily fixed and bring them right back into this game. So Bellet with a couple jab steps at Sewell and a foul on the floor. It's going to be on Osterstock trying to box out King. So that's going to put Solano. They were already in the single bonus, so King's going to go for a one and one. But King's missed two crucial free throws. That could have put them up by nine at this point. He's had three chances for and ones and have nine points, but he missed the last two free throws. So and I guess that's I guess one of the few negatives you can point out about the Merit Thunderbirds is their free throw shooting has been okay, but they need to get just a tad bit better if they want to extend this lead. Yeah, Merritt only shoots 67% as a team compared to Solano, 71. So one advantage for Solano is at the stripe. But King able to rattle home that first free throw, hit the front of the rim, rattle off the backboard. Second one is good. So 28-19 now, nine-point game with 6.30 approaching. Donovan Smith with LeJohn Sewell. Robinson, Cox, and Osterstock. The majority of the starters in this game. Cox draws a foul on Trayvon King, so he'll go line for one and one. I think I think this would be Cox's fifth free throw yeah. right now. Fifth and sixth. So potentially sixth. Ten more and he'll have fifteen. And one of the things about that play is if it was a little bit faster uh passing, Devin Smith was wide open at the bottom, but his teammate just didn't see him. So Cox. Has to hit this free throw in order to get another free throw. He does. And that was a beautiful free throw. Not even hitting rim. 
And right now, we see the Solano Falcons. They're starting to develop that rhythm. Especially at the free throw line for Corey Cox. That's where he gets his offense started. He hits. Does not hit. It rattles out. Thought that was going in. That was halfway out, uh, down and out. Yeah. there. But you know what? That's okay. I wouldn't fret too much about that. You're only down eight points. As long as you can play some better defense, these guys are okay. And speaking of. Excellent Donovan's awareness by uh, Donovan Smith, Donovan Smith getting, right there. Getting in the Almost had lane. the ball. Getting in the passing lane, knocking the ball away. A little bit lazy pass from the uh, Thunderbirds. Yes, that was great anticipa anticipation by Donovan Smith. Uh, um, he'll, he'll definitely come away with way more steals and more opportunities. And the three-point from Bellet. And a scrum for the ball into the hands of Merritt. And Donovan Smith blocks a shot. But Merritt size too much for Solano to handle with Oliver Roger Lubemba. So Lubemba, the backup center. As Tim Moore gets it in the post, kicks it to Corey Cox. Stole Another lazy away pass. From Merritt McAllister over to Pope. Pope lays it up and in. Yes, they definitely need to cut out the lazy passes. They they are causing way too many turnovers, and they need to definitely make better passes and move the ball around. Long three-pointer from Donovan Smith, rebounded by Jesse Carey, and he throws it to an open spot in the court, but it's going to be a backcourt violation. Uh, they're just making simple mistakes right now. They, they could fix it. You know, they're not hard to fix, but they definitely need to fix it right now. And maybe that's what this timeout is for, to get their heads back, get some composure in this huddle with 5.08 left, 32 to 20 merit leads. And tonight is actually Coaches versus Cancer Night in the Salon Gymnasium for both the men and the women. You'll notice the men are wearing pink socks, and uh, I think that's a great cause that Salon does every single year from the basketball most program. Most certainly, most certainly. So Coaches versus Cancer Night. Something you will see from the, the lady side of things as well. They'll don some pink gear. Coach Borcher will put on a pink little uh, shirt with a sweater vest, you know, his patent sweater vest. Yeah, I think I've seen Borcher earlier with something pink on. I couldn't really tell because it was like a simple, simple glance because I was paying attention to the game, mm -hmm. but he definitely has some pink on. So 5.08. You're watching the Solano College Sports Network. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Solano, we are also on Channel 28 Think TV and vice versa. If you're checking us out on Channel 28, we have a YouTube page, youtube.com slash Solano College. We'll, we'll provide all your Solano sports needs coming from basketball to baseball, last semester football, volleyball, soccer. Whatever you want from Solano, we'll get it for you. So that's the end of the timeout, Merritt coming out with Mike McAllister, Rodney Pope in the backcourt with Javante Carlton, Oliver Roger Lubemba, and Anthony Tabor. So in the corner to Carlton. Gets the ball back from McAllister, tries to yeah. stuff it home, but Jesse Carey denied it. Oh, he almost slammed it down. He almost did, but great defense by number 21. Um, he made a made, made a great play on the ball, Jesse Carey. Yeah, Carey's going to get uh, some free throws out of it because he got the offensive rebound and was fouled on the rebound. So Jesse Carey going to get a chance for one and one. Again, has to hit this first free throw to get a second. And it's good. So Jesse Carey cutting this lead down to 11. If he hits this, it'll be a 10-point game with just under five minutes. And Carey hits two of two. So free, the free throw line is, is what's keeping Solano in this game at this point. Yes, they, they definitely need more free throw opportunities. And the only way they will get there is by driving to the hole and um, causing contact from the big man. And if they cause contact, their big man will get in foul trouble. And it will make it easier for Solano to play a small lineup at times. Corner three from Pope, no good. Rebound tipped off of the hands that they're going to say of Solano. So, Excellent ball movement we're seeing from the Thunderbird, uh, Thunderbirds right now. Not just really focusing on one guy, kind of sharing the ball. 
and find the wide open man to get the easy shot. And Roger Lubemba, Oliver Roger Lubemba is calling for the ball in the post because nobody was really guarding him. Lubemba with a post move on Jesse Carey. Too short, ball batted around. Corey Cox comes up with it and he stepped on the line so it's gonna be a turnover. Merritt ball. Yeah, he never had full control over that one. Um, and he was heading out of bounds anyway, so it would have been very difficult for him to gain, gain control and stay in bounds at the same time. So a couple of bad bounces for Solano. That rebound that just nicked off of a Solano player got Merritt a second chance. And the short shot by Lubemba was batted around. Corey Cox unable to control the ball. So Solano calls another timeout at this point in the game. A 10-point game. Both teams have eight team fouls with 4.13 left. Yeah, Solano, they, they just need to get more physical on the defenses, defensive side and move the ball around more on the offensive side, and you will see a lot of improvement within their game. So Solano with a shorter lineup at this point. Jesse Carey, Tim Moore, and Corey Cox in the front court with Sewell and Donovan Smith in the backcourt. So Merritt. Something's taking a little <laughs> long for the, the ref. Wanted to correct something with the clock. It sounds like a little mariachi thing in here. <laughs> like <laughs> Technical difficulties right now. but Maybe uh, the, is it the buzzer? I, I think that's what it is. It, it sounds like the buzzer. Yeah, I think it's Spanish night here in the Solano <laughs> Gymnasium. <laughs> yeah, oh, and see, as soon as I say that, the, the fiesta's over, folks. <laughs> so no more fiest festivities here in uh, the Solano Gym. I was wondering, I honestly thought that was our headphones, and yeah. I thought I was hearing something. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad I'm not hearing voices, folks. Uh, <laughs> I'm, ha I'm happy, healthy, and uh, in good shape here. So, hey, that was very risky again by the... I want to make sure all the buzzers work. Oh, oh, I thought I was about to start up again. Oh, me too. <laughs> so some technical difficulties <laughs> from the Solano gym. They're going to talk to Coach Nagel about what to do about it. It's looking like they're just going to obey the whistle right now instead of using the buzzer. Yes. We see the referees talking to both coaches. So they're going to adjust on the fly. We'll adjust on the fly, you know. It's an imperfect game. This, this, things happen, so no harm, no foul. Yeah, but the thing about playing by the whistle, it's kind of hard because the whistle and the sound of the shoes are kind of similar. So <laughs> at times, you know, you'll probably stop and be like, oh, I thought somebody blew the whistle, but and it was definitely the shoes. So <laughs> it, it's kind of hard. I've, I've had uh, moments where that happened to me. So drive by Carlton. Good stop by Corey Cox denying that attempt and high off the glass goes Anthony Tabor with that layup. Tabor showing some excellent leaping ability. So Tabor's first points of the game getting a rare start for the Merritt men as Cox puts it up off the side of the backboard and they're off and running. Tabor over to Pope. They are mishandling the ball, but they did not get a turnover out of it. Yeah, he wanted the LU real bad, but that's what happens when you jump in the air because if if they close in on the LU, then they're just stuck in the air and don't know what to do at times. And Donovan Smith strong off the back of the backboard and rebounded by Merritt. So McAllister bringing it up. McAllister over to Pope. Solano switches to his own defense. McAllister dumps it into Lubemba. Lubemba with the layup. Big man from Paris, France, apparently. Oh, P Paris, you know. We're go going global here, right? With yeah. the fiesta sounds of our scoreboard to the Frenchman <laughs> from Merritt. So international flavor to tonight's game here at SCSN. Are we ever going to start like a SCSN Deportes? You never know. Yeah. <laughs> Sewell with a long three off of the back of the rim, rebounded by Merritt. Now we always try and think of things to improve the Solano yeah. College Sports Network. Why yeah. not? SES in Deportes. You know, we could <laughs> give it a try. You know, anything's possible. I think that will improve our soccer games. <laughs> <laughs> Go! <laughs> and a turnover from Merritt. So 
It's 36-22 with 2.13 left in the game. So JT Robinson checking into the game. Very small lineup now with Snell, Sewell, and Smith. All smaller guards with JT Robinson and Jesse Carey. So Merritt's zone defense with their length. We'll see if Solano can get something going. Looks like they have a play called. And they get nothing out of it, so they'll back out, try it again, or try something new. Snell over to Sewell, just swinging the ball around in that zone defense. Robinson drives, dribbles it back out. Carey for three, and it's good. So he stepped into that three-pointer. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to see a big man get get a three-point shot at times. You know, I was, I was kind of hoping, you know, I would get some three-point opportunities <laughs> in my big man day. Yeah. But, you know. Hopefully that three-point from Jesse Carey kind of kick-starts the offense and allows this Solano Falcons team to come back. Yeah, at this, it's an 11-point game right now. Pope with a good ball fake. Good, even better pass, but not able to hit that layup was Anthony Tabor. Smith now on the one-man fast break, one on three, off the back of the backboard, and good. Yeah, I think Tabor thought about dunking it, but then at the last minute changed his mind. That's usually what happens. The ball will roll out and, you know. Never a good thing to have any type of hesitation when driving to the rim. Yeah. <laughs> and and, as, and uh, we see as a result from Tabor, you missed that easy point. It could have been a dunk or it could have been a simple shot. Yeah, and we, we have the perfect angle of that from where we're sitting. That ball is just resting on the, the little part of the rim that's, you know, not attached to the backboard. It, yeah. it, the ball fit perfectly on there, so oh. that indecision, not a good one by Taylor. I honestly thought that was dunk number two coming from the <laughs> Thunderbirds. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing their own thunder with them. Yep. <laughs> but the Falcons swarmed in with their defense. So 36-27 game, so they cut the double-digit lead down to nine, and that's important psychologically. A double-digit deficit is definitely different from a single digit. So nine-point game with one minute approaching, one minute left, and Rodney Pope trying to initiate the offense. Carlton back to McAllister, back to Pope. Carlton in the corner, so they're swarming on that zone defense. McAllister open for three, and it rattles out. And offensive rebound yet again from Merritt. Drive by Pope, Eurostep, and a great pass to Denzel Bellet. Yes, they are definitely getting, uh, Solano is definitely getting out to the ball more, but as you can see, um, they are small down low, so they are, Merritt is getting more offensive opportunities down low. And Solano, they just have to deal with it at the moment. So Solano gets the offensive rebound, so the shot clock is off with 10 seconds and counting. Snell in the corner, does 10 more. Seven seconds, five, four, three, two. Too much one. passing. And Merritt with a half-court shot. Oh, just so off close. the rim. So, so close. Merritt could have put a cap on that if he made that half-court shot, but... As it stands, 38 to 27 at this point in the first half. So Merritt Thunderbirds lead your Solano Falcons, 38 to 27. Guys, uh, first half, really all about Merritt. So Marvell, what did Merritt do to get this double digit point lead? Well, honestly, in my opinion, they didn't have to do much. One of the things that, you know, that they did to help build this lead was they out rebounded the Falcons and they had excellent communication pass, 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 finding that open guy, him sinking the shot. Almost like a Spurs type of offense. You know how they just pass the ball around and somewhere there's a wide open man just to get the wide open shot. And then, you know, a lot of these points were off of easy turnovers by the Falcons, you know? Yeah, defense leads to offense. You see that all throughout basketball. And Anthony, what does Solano have to do to get Merritt off of the boards? Um, they definitely need to box out and get more physical down low. Because when you get physical, you could create fouls and, you know, all type of stuff down low. And they just need to move the ball more on defense. And that's it. So let's see if Solano can make some second half adjustments, Coach Nagel and the team. So at the half, the score is 38 to 27. We'll be back right after this. Thank you. 
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solano Gymnasium, where the score at halftime is 38 to 27. Merritt Thunderbirds leading your Solano Falcons, and we're just about ready for the second half inbounds. And guys, what do you think Solano is going to do this half? What are your predictions for the outcome of this game? Well, right now I'm going to predict that they're going to come out a lot better just as they do all season in the second half. Maybe develop a much better rhythm and maybe not, you know, rely so much on the three-point. Better communication. And one common thing that we always see in the second half for the Falcons is they correct those easy uh, mistakes. And you see on the court... JT Robinson's going to start the second half instead of Andre Usher. So they're ditching the idea of going big with the backup center Usher in the starting lineup. So the regular starters are out there with Donovan Smith and LeJean Sewell in the backcourt. JT Robinson, hopefully his athleticism can help the Solano Falcons on offense and defense with Corey Cox and Kyle Osterstock as the starters on the court for the second half for Solano. So now Cox with a good screen from Osterstock frees him up for the jumper. But rattles out Smith with the floater and good. Yeah, great rebound by Donovan Smith and a great good shot by Corey. Even though he didn't make it, it was a good shot. He'll eventually knock them down. Yeah, that's the kind of shot you want on offense. Good, strong screen from Osterstock. Free up Cox for the open look in rhythm. So now DJ Kennedy with the drive. Kicks out to the corner for Pope. Pope fakes the three-point shot. Passes it back to Kennedy into the middle, but... Is poked away by Solano as Sewell comes up with it. Right now, seeing a much better uh, Falcons team coming out of the first half. Got a lot better sense of urgency, I would say, from this Falcons squad. Sewell, now with the ball handler, up to Osterstock. Looking to swing it. Now Cox goes away from the screen from Osterstock, and it is just off of the rim and a bad one-handed pass from Rodney Pope leads to the Merritt turnover. And right now we, we've seen two Merritt Thunderbird turnovers that are, you know, kind of one of those when you have the big lead and it's just like for some reason falls apart. And, you know, the Falcons already developed a good rhythm, so Merritt, they might want to be careful. And that was a questionable foul call, I would have to say. The... Merritt defender Pope tripped over Osterstock's leg and they called him for an offensive foul? Well, it wasn't really questionable. Um, it's, it was more Donovan Smith's fault because he didn't wait for the screen to fully set up. And when that happens, you, you'll usually see that happen. And it, 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 it definitely is a um, foul on the offense. So their thighs collided. I thought that was incidental contact. But good point by Anthony. It was just a late uh, too early of a drive from Donovan yes. Smith that caused that contact. Yes, he has to be more patient in those type of situations. And DJ Kennedy on the other end, end hits the jumper. Smith, no patience there, drives the entire length of the court, but just flips it short. So good strong move from Smith, just not able to hit the layup. A nice Euro step from Carlton. Carlton puts it up and in. So Javante Carlton. <laughs> you can't rebound it and give it to the other team when you're the Falcons. you got to take that ball for yourselves and not give it back. So Javante Carlton's athleticism has its mark on this game so far with that impressive putback dunk and some offensive rebounding from Carlton. So Smith being guarded by Pope. Drives, kicks it out to Usher who checked back into the game. Good play by Usher, but a better play from the Merritt defender tipping that ball out of bounds by Tabor. And it looked to me, it looked like JT Robinson wasn't ready for that pass. You got to move a lot quicker and be, and once again, be aware of your surroundings. The Falcons are looking much better. As you can see, they are moving the ball a lot better. And Robinson with a strong take, just too high off the backboard, and he's going to go to the foul line for two. That's where really Solano lived in the first half, on the foul line. But this will be JT Robinson's first and second free throw attempts. It was mainly Corey Cox going to the line. And when you're the Solano Falcons, it's good to hit the easy shots with your free throws, but don't let that be your game for the whole rest of the second half. We want to, you know, the Falcons, you want to get your shots and not just rely so much on free throws because, you know, free throws will keep you in a game, but they don't necessarily always win the game, especially when you're down uh, by a big lead. But Robinson able to hit both free throws. And Andre Usher checking in for Osterstock. If I'm the Falcons, 
you know, I want to continue to do great on my free throws, but maybe play a little bit better defense and just, you know, just as we saw in the first two possessions, play some very good offense. So the zone defense from Solano with Robinson and Smith up top. Timeout from Merritt. Didn't like what he saw there from his offense. And right now, that was a smart timeout because Merritt coming into the second half, they weren't quite like their subs in the first half. A little bit lazy, I would say. Yeah, sometimes that second half for the team that's going in with the league can be harmful because you kind of relax a little bit, we're up. Maybe that hustle we see in the first half doesn't translate to the second half. And that's kind of been a common thing that we've noticed with the Solano Falcons is sometimes they're down by a huge margin, mm -hmm. but the opposing team will get lazy a little bit and the Falcons are able to come back and win. And hopefully they can do that for this game. Yeah, right now it's only an 11-point game with 17-19 left in the first half. Plenty of time for Solano. They just got to get their offense clicking. Right now, if I'm the coach, I'm telling my players they're doing a very good job. And, you know, just they have to – I can't stress it enough. You have to be aware of where the ball is at and can't be surprised if it comes your way. Once you get that ball, if you're not passing it, you got to get it to the hole. So Marvell doing saying the exact opposite of Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson wants hand down, man down. Marvell wants your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely gotta have hands up. Hands up. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so Merritt inbounds the ball to DJ Kennedy. Over to Carlton. Strong move. Over to the corner for Pope. Pope for three, and he hits it. So Rodney Pope with the rare three-point shot from Merritt. So and right now they're getting back to what they're accustomed to. Pass the ball around and find the wide open man. And Merrick going with man defense, switching it up, giving Solano different looks from the zone to man to man. JT Robinson with the screen from Sewell. He takes his man off the dribble, spin move, and up and under, and too strong, but good offensive rebound, good pump fake, and foul by Carlton. So great hustle from JT Robinson. Yeah, their offense is looking way much better. As you can see, they're setting screens, moving around, moving the ball. This is what offense is all about. He, JT Robinson must have heard my comments because that was excellent awareness. It was. He, he, was, he didn't give up on the play after his shot. He saw that his shot was off, but he, he was the first man to the spot where the ball was bouncing. And one of the fundamentals of basketball is follow your shot, and he did exactly that but not able to follow through on the free throw, so he misses the first. And a 14-point deficit for the Solano Falcons. Second free throw is good, so 13-point ball game. As Merritt inbounds the ball, Anthony Tabor inbounds it to DJ Kennedy on the floor with Rodney Pope, Trayvon King, and Javante Carlton. So Kennedy takes Sewell off the dribble, gets a screen, Passes it out, to, uh, but he travels before he passes Long in that the ball. air just too long. Again, a little indecision from Merritt, I would say, whether to take the ball or pass it. We've seen a, a couple mental mistakes starting to build on the Merritt side of things. Well, that's what happens when you play good defense, Brian. And you can see um, Solano is definitely forcing Merritt to these little simple turnovers that Solano was having in the first half. So good defensive pressure from the Falcon side of the ball. A kick ball from Carlton. They're going to take the ball out of bounds. With 17 seconds left on the shot clock. So enough time, plenty of time to initiate their offense. So Donovan Smith out there with LeJean Sewell, JT Robinson, Corey Cox, and Andre Usher. So Smith with Merritt playing a 3-2 zone with Pope, Carlton, and Kennedy up top. Good, strong take from Corey Cox and a hard foul from King, but Corey Cox going back to the line. Yes, great, great drive to the hole by Corey Cox. And he he got the foul that he wanted against the big man. That's what you want. Yeah, Corey Cox, his game is all about contact, and he's able to hit. He, he has the range to hit open jumpers from the outside, but primarily he is the most proficient driver to the basket, I would say, from the Solano side of things. Cox hits the first free throw as Merritt makes a substitution with Denzel Bellett checking back into the game. The lefty checking in for Anthony Tabor. So
So Corey Cox. It's the second. So Cox is game from the line just as good as his last one. I believe he's seven of eight on free throws this evening. So 45-34 ball game with Pope up top. As King sets the screen, and great pick and roll play and foul by Usher. But pretty good pick and roll offense from Merritt. Very bad defensive play by the Falcons. No need to slap the arm. You just need to put your hands up. And Andre Usher has the size. He's a little bit shorter than Trayvon King, but maybe that's just his hair. But who knows? <laughs> Trayvon King averaging 10.4 points per game and 6.0 6 rebounds. Yeah, so I think King's hair adds an extra two inches to his size. So, <laughs> so he plays center, you know. <laughs> he's, he's a power four, but his hair makes him a center. <laughs> <laughs> so King hit the first free throw. Misses the second, and the long rebound goes to Carlton, and Carlton puts it back up and in. So. Good job on Carlson's part, or on Carlson's part. Never lost eye contact on that ball and was able to get the uh, easy layup. So Corey Cox gets in the corner, tries to lay up, but too strong, and a travel. So good hustle defense from both Tim Moore and Corey Cox on the ball handler Trayvon King, forcing that turnover. Because Trayvon King, when he got that rebound, looked like he wanted to get started on the fast break, but Solano swarmed him. It'll cause that turnover. So Donovan Smith going to take the ball out of bounds. JT Robinson over to Sewell. Andrew Brinson seeing his first action of the ball game in the corner. Now he has the ball. Brinson does. The backup guard. So Solano going small. JT Robinson from the corner. Not able to hit that jumper. Just a little bit too much power on that shot by JT Robinson. That corner jumper, no good from JT, but Carlton from Merritt brings the ball. Pope over to Bellet. Bellet swarm double teamed by Solano, but he was able to pass it out of the pressure. Pope guarded by JT Robinson takes him off the dribble. Great pass from Tra to Trayvon King. And where to get the layup? And where to get the b big man into the game? They were trying to, the Thunderbirds were trying to go with the outside shot, wasn't working, so they managed to work their way and get it to their big man, Trayvon King. Yes, that was a nice pass. Um, this should get down low to the big man, and that's what you like to see from a team. Give it to the big man, let them go to work. It's a good pick and roll offense from the Merritt side of things. Sewell in the corner drives. They mm. Merritt kind of gave up on that play, and Sewell kept composure, knew where he was under the rim, laid it up and in. I yeah. think what had happened on that play is they thought he was out of bounds, which he was not. He was still in there, and it caused him to ease up a little bit, and he was able to get the reverse layup. Carlton for three. So Javante Carlton hits that three-point shot. Javante averaging 13 points on the year with 3.7 rebounds and 1.3 assists. Having a great game for Merritt is... Javante Carlton. Brinson into the post to Tim Moore. Back out to Brinson. You got to look for your shot if you're Tim Moore on that one. He has, he has space definitely for a little mid-range shot. Pope gets the ball poked away, but King gets the foul on Sewell on the shot. So King will go back to the line, shooting two. And that small look from Solano, that's what's going to hurt you on the rebounding side of things with Smith, Brinson, and Sewell out there. Yes, King is looking like DeAndre Jordan out <laughs> here. He may have 20 rebounds at the end of the night. Even with his thumb wrapped on his left hand, you can <laughs> see. So playing a little nicked up. And <laughs> I think that at this point in the season, injuries are a part of the game that you just kind of have to deal with. Yes, yeah, like LaMarcus Aldridge playing with a hurt the thumb. And he's sacrificing his, his season for the team. And um, a lot of doctors told him he needs thumb surgery, but he decided to put it off until after the season and just go from it, go where, you know, from it. Yeah, just work through the pain. The, that's just a certain mindset that athletes have, so like, like a Kobe Bryant who plays through injuries. I remember, didn't one season Kobe Bryant just shoot with his left hand because his right hand was hurting too much? Uh, yes, he did that this season too. I think he hurt his right shoulder, so he played the rest of the game with his left um, hand. Yeah, he tore his right rotator cuff, was 
out for the year now. Yes. So rebound by JT Robinson. They're going to call that over the back on Javante Carlton. So Robinson going over the back of the Merritt defender to get that rebound. So Carlton going to dribble the ball up very slowly, take his time with 13 minutes left in the game. The lead has ballooned up to 19. Three-point shot from DJ Kennedy, too short, tipped out of bounds by Lubemba, who checks back into the game. Oliver Roger Lubemba out of France. And to me on that shot, it looked like DJ Kennedy kind of had some hesitation. He didn't know if he quite wanted to shoot the three or maybe pass the ball, and he just kind of shot it up there and was in, uh, unable to get the points. So now Princeton gets a drive from JT Robinson. They call it offensive foul. Good. The refs looked at each other. They had decided what they had, and the guy under the rim called offensive foul. That looked like a good call. The defender was in there in time, got underneath JT. I thought the call could have went both ways, but he's the ref. I'm up here, so <laughs> I guess it was a good call. Yes, the referee job is kind of hard to deal with, seeing things at such a fast pace and having so little time to make a decision. So I, I give it up to the refs, you yeah. know. Give the zebras a break. So <laughs> uh, Carlton bringing the ball up with Mike McAllister now in the game. McAllister over to Kennedy. Kennedy with Lubumba and Bellet. Bellet has it for the three and is short. So Merritt just settling for three-point shots lately on these last couple possessions. That could definitely hurt you as a team. A long three-pointer. Rebounded by JT Robinson. Good post move out to carry in the corner. Brinson up top over to Robinson. Long three, and it's good. So JT from distance. They look like they're shooting from NBA range <laughs> with these the deep threes. Yeah, and I thought Solano was getting a little too unselfish uh, for once. And yeah. overpassing, they pass up a corn three, a shot from Princeton. But JT Robinson letting that unselfishness pay off with that three-point shot. Kennedy now on the zone defense trying to attack. Floater from McAllister off the front of the rim and rebounded by Corey Cox. Good outlet pass to Brinson, but Brinson took his eye off the ball. It's a mental mistake and out of bounds. So Snell, Joe Sean Snell checking into the game for Donovan Smith. And DJ Kennedy gonna inbound to Mike McAllister. So the Bellet passes from the post out to Kennedy. Kennedy guarded by the much shorter Brinston. Bellet to the outside of Carlton into Lubemba in the post, out to the three-point shooter. Carlton does not take that three-point shot. McAllister drives and poked away from uh, by Solano. JT Robinson on the break, draws a foul from DJ Kennedy. So Merritt not wanting to shoot the ball. That lets Solano's defense catch up on that offensive possession. Yeah, they had so many open opportunities. I don't see why they didn't shoot the ball, but it's good for Solano. Yeah, a lot of unselfishness. Sometimes you can be too unselfish in this game, and you, you want to get your teammates involved. And I don't, I don't think that's the type of play that coaches mind. Obviously, coaches mind when you don't capitalize, but being too unselfish. Yeah, that, I, I think everybody touched the ball at least three times yeah. on that possession. So at least that passing drill looked pretty good for Merritt. <laughs> and it's too short by JT Robinson, so 55-40 with 10.50 left in the game. DJ Kennedy passes it, lobs it into Carlton, and Carlton catches it and finishes on the other side of the rim with a left-handed layup. And to continue to have the success that uh, the Thunderbirds have had, I think right now what they need to do is continue getting the ball to their big man. Because right now the Solano Falcons just haven't had quite the answer for it And yet. Princeton for three, answers with the three. So now it's cut down to 14 point game. So oh, Brinston, the backup guard, along with Snell. Usually good for a three from both of them off the bench. So McAllister now, back. And Carey with the steal, but Carey passed it before the guy was looking, before his teammate was looking. Bellet with the 
layup and the foul. And that all resulted from the great awareness that we saw from Carlton, able to just fly in there and re, uh, reclaim the basketball. So Carlton with a nice steal, gets it into Denzel Bella in the post, and he's able to make a move and draw a foul and lay it up on the other side of the rim with his left hand, which is his natural shooting hand. You always got to be aware of those lefties. He hits the free throw. Bellet averaging 10 points, six rebounds, two assists a game. One of the five Merritt men who averaged 10 points. One of them's not here, Leo Smith, but Trayvon King. As Dom Smith drives, too strong with the layup. Carlton gathers it, drives. The floater is too short. Smith passes it to Cox. JT Robinson in the open court. Is he going to throw it down? Yes, he is. The one-handed slam from JT Robinson. And that was a very impressive dunk by JT Robinson, but if that's all you're playing for is just to get all fancy, then this Lano team is in trouble. No, well, actually, Marvin, I think what he was trying to do is get his team going, you know, maybe a momentum shift type of thing, you know. Dunks can't always do that. As you can see, LeBron and Russell Westbrook, they create energy by dunking. So I think that's what he was trying to do. Maybe turning the ties energetically from the Falcons as Cox gets it in the corner. Cox breaking his man down with a step back three, too short. Ostersock trying to battle, but into the game is Dan and Lemon. Number 34. And timeout from the Merritt Thunderbirds. So with 8.57, it's a 62 to 45 ball game. So Merritt able to add on to the lead in the second half. And guys, Saul's not being able to capitalize on some of the merit mistakes in the second half. No, because one of the difference between Solano and Merritt is the mistakes that Merritt's made, they've quickly, you know, tried to find solutions to it. And Solano, you know, it's like they find the solutions, but at the same time, they make other mistakes. But right now, just like as Anthony said, perhaps I was a little bit too hard on Robinson. Maybe that dunk will kind of influence them. And, you know, with a little over nine minutes to go, maybe we could see a very good comeback from Solano. Yeah, and JT has had a couple of those energetic moments with his dunking ability. And let's not forget about the three also. Yeah, that three up top. So JT Robinson, after a scoreless first half, came out in the second half, got to the line a couple times as well. So JT really showing coach that you didn't start me. I, hey, I can still contribute to this team because <laughs> JT was the man out of the rotation with Andre Usher starting. So And not to create any excuses for Solano, but I have seen that where sometimes if you remove one piece of a puzzle of your starting line, it kind of disrupts a lot of stuff. But again, you know, that's a little bit of an excuse for Solano. They still, you know, shouldn't be in the situation that they're in. Yeah, but we're not making excuses. But I think that's a valid point that you're making because Usher is usually the big man off of the bench that's the first one to come off. So when you have to take Usher and Ostersock out of there, especially with Merritt's rebounding ability, then that really hurts your bench because there's no rebounding coming off the bench. Yes, and I think that's why the coach went back to his normal rotation because he seen the mistake and he realized how small they were against these big guys on Merritt. And so just right on cue, Osterstock for Usher coming into the game, and that's the type of rotation you'll see from Solano more often than not. DJ Kennedy at the line, hits the first one. Kennedy, one of the not one of the five guys who averages 10 points or more, but he averages 9.5, so it's pretty close. Merritt likes to share the ball a lot. A lot of guys with three assists. Leo Smith, Ronnie Pope, and Mike McAllister all average over three assists. And y'all can rebound, folks. So Merritt, a well-balanced team. You see that on display tonight as Donovan Smith drives, passes to Usher, and blocked out of bounds by Rodney Pope, but good pass from Donovan Smith. You like to see that from your point guard. Always. He really sold sold it like he was going to take the ball in, but really he was searching for a wide open man and he was able to find him. So Cox in the corner, takes Pope off the dribble, tries to get the foul called. Refs don't buy it. Robinson oh. throws it to the corner, but is intercepted by Kennedy, but good play by Andre Usher, getting in the passing lane, but Mayor able to steal the ball away but from Trayvon King. You so Mayor's going to settle down a little bit. And 
The ball is up and in, made by Denzel Bellett. Foul on Andre Usher. You got to dive on the floor with those loose ball moments, man. It's it's like when, a, when if you dive on the ball, the coach will see that you're hustling and you may get more playing time. And if you if you do get, you will most likely get the ball. But if you play lazy and just let the other team get the ball, then you see what happens. Um, Merritt just put up an easy score against Solano. So Bellet trying to hit and does make the free throw. He wants one more. I thought the basket counted. Yeah, refs realize that too. <laughs> I think the re the rest got caught napping a little bit. They thought he was shooting too, but Belt knew. No, I made that. Uh, <laughs> I got my three points. I don't need to shoot. I mean, if you really want me to shoot one more free throw, I will. But hey. Hey. If, they, if they want to keep giving you points, why not? So foul on Cox before he makes that move. So it's going to only be the fifth team foul. So ball is going to be out of bounds. Now, right now, if I'm Merritt, I understand I have a big lead, but right now I want to maintain my composure. Right now they're kind of disagreeing with the call. And good inbound place to Cox, but that size of Trayvon King able to block that shot. Very good on Cox, though. Never lost sight of the ball and was quick to try and reclaim it, but Bellet, just unable to get it. Bell at the tricky lefty layup. Able to hit from Merritt. Gross lead to 24. Cross court pass to Snell. Tries to stay in bounds, does. Thought he did, but not able to regain his footing in bounds. Stepped on the line. So that cross court pass too high for Snell. Smith gets back on defense. Ronnie Pope tried to catch him off guard while he was looking and talking to his teammate. So the zone from Solano, Joe Sean Snell and Smith up top. Bellet with the ball. Passes it to a cutting King. King not able to hit it, but draws the foul. So good movement from Trayvon King off the ball. So nine team fouls from Solano. So the next one will put them in the double bonus. So every foul from Solano sends Merritt from the line for two instead of just a one and one. One thing that you have to commend Merritt about is that, you know, they had a big lead and at times have gotten lazy. But they kind of also maintain some of that intensity as well. Sure, they've made a few mistakes here and there, but they quickly capsize on it and, you know, correct themselves along the way. Yep. Merritt, 17 and 6. And I think that's something you like from a winning team to not let things down, to keep an intensity throughout the game. I think that's a winning formula for Merritt. Certainly, because in most cases, teams kind of start relaxing, and that usually allows the, uh, the lead that they have to uh, disappear. So a lot of substitutions for Solano with now Brinston and Sewell with Donovan Smith, JT Robinson, and Jesse Carey. It's going a little small. Carey from the free throw line, too short on that jumper. He hesitated while shooting the jumper, and as a result, you can see he came up short. Yeah, another inde indecisive shot. In this ball game, we've had a couple of those from the Merritt side of things. So a foul on that Merritt drive. So Mike McAllister going to the line. Solid numbers off the bench, averaging five, two, and three. Five points, two assists, three rebounds. Oh, correction, Trayvon King's back at the line. Having a very good second half. In the first half, Trayvon King, not really too much of a factor. We didn't call his name very much, but the second half with his athleticism and his defensive ability, I'm pretty good second half for Merritt. And that's because, as I was saying earlier, what Merritt needed to do was get their big men involved a little bit more, and they've done that this second half, and that's allowed them to extend their lead. I think Trayvon King is doing a little trash talking down there. I've seen the ref come up to him and start talking to him. So, Yeah, Trayvon King, very confident, and uh, you can get a little chippy down there, so ref's trying to And just as I've said earlier, you know, when you have the big lead, you also got to try and keep your composure. Smith with a nice layup. So Donovan Smith taking the ball into the hole. We haven't called his name very much after that first half start where he hit a couple three-pointers, but not able to get on a roll like we've seen Donovan Smith do in the past. And the foul on the drive from Denzel Bellett. So he'll go to the line. And now that they know that uh, Solano's in the double bonus, You'll see a lot of drives from Merritt side of things. Certainly, certainly. They know where to get the easy points at now. 
So being in foul trouble definitely does not help the Solano cause. Bellet, the lefty, hits the first free throw. After a couple shaky free throws, Merritt's been able to correct their free throw shooting as well. So Bellet, who averages 10 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 2.4 assists on the year, hits the second. No doubt about it. So, the, so it's a little a palindrome, folks. 47 to 74. Same uh, thing back and forth. <laughs> Full cowboy of the day. Brought to you by Brian Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sewell over to Donovan Smith. Drives. Shoots the ball. And he makes it. So Donovan Smith making his last two buckets. Oh, he's starting to heat up. And a little error from the scores table. They gave that two-point shot to the guests, but... Yeah, I noticed that, too. I uh, guess we're oh. still having technical difficulties. I was waiting for the points to change for the home team. Uh, I don't think our uh, score would reflect that because it's 74-49 in all actuality because Donovan Smith hit that last shot. So Andrew Brinson. And I think they're correcting that now. 49-74, yep. So Sewell fakes the three-point shot, steps in, hits the shot. So nice pump fake from LeJean Sewell. They have five minutes left. They could still pull a comeback. It'll be yep. something we'll talk about here at Solano for things to come if they can come back. <laughs> Definitely not too late. Just play better defense, and they got to play much, much better offense for the Solano Falcons. So Pope takes him off the dribble. McAllister passed up that open shot because he wanted to get it into the post to bell it, but good play by Solano deflecting that out of bounds. Yeah, Merritt's bench. Wolfen, because Pope took their man off the dribble. So Carey dribbles it out after rebounding it to Sewell. Sewell gets a lot of daylight, draws the blocking foul on number five, Anthony Tabor. Tabor not liking it, but... Sewell able to get to the line. Yeah, they definitely need to get to the line and boost their confidence and just have the um, the easy shots go in. It's all, it's all to it. They could easily come back from this um, deficit. But you got to hit your free throws, and Sewell misses his first. But LeJean Sewell, I think a nice player that's come out of the pack for a Solano Played primarily off the bench early on, but he's getting some starts here and there. And what he does well is he drives to the hole, and he's very aware situationally. If he knows that Merritt's in foul trouble, he'll go to the hole more often. And I think that's the type of player you want in this program. Yes, that's definitely what coaches want in a player. They, they like to see offensive awareness and just awareness, period, because it, it shows um, your basketball IQ and... Everybody loves a player with a high basketball IQ. And hey, athleticism and height don't hurt there because DJ Kennedy used his to get that off the backboard. So Merritt with a 24 point lead. Sewell drives up and under, draws the foul. So fancy move from Sewell, able to get the contact, try and flip it up. But at least he gets the foul. So back to back trips for Sewell at the free throw line. Sewell hits the first free throw with 4.23 left in the game and all of a sudden Solano with their offensive aggression have put Merritt in the single bonus so they'll get one and ones every time they get a foul that Sewell hits both so a 22 point ball game with number 22 bringing the ball up with DJ Kennedy. Drives pass, tries to drive past Princeton with a cutting Carlton. Carlton up and in, so good back cut from Javante Carlton. Donovan Smith bringing the ball up for Solana on the offensive end to Sewell. Princeton in the corner, thought about that three, but instead wants, reloads, and it was too short, but Donovan Smith with the offensive rebound turns. Too strong off the back of the rim, but good hustle from Jesse Carey. And Donovan Smith wide open for the layup. So good 
hustle from Solano from multiple players on that possession. Jesse Carey able to get that ball away from the Merritt size and pass it over to Sewell. And Donovan Smith saw that and cut to the basket. That was a great hustle by the Falcons. And as you can see, it led to easy points. And Javante Carlton with the easiest three of the afternoon or the, or the evening here for Merritt. So Carlton having a heck of a game, the leading score for Merritt and in the game. That was the second three-pointer of the evening. And he makes the lead balloon to 25. So with 316 left in the game, it's an 81 to 56 ball game. And you're watching men's basketball here on the Solano College Sports Network here in the Solano Gymnasium. Brian Nelson here with Marvell Bluford and Anthony Williams. And we'd like to thank you for watching. And if you, if you want to check out some more basketball action, we have the women's game against Merritt, and that should be a heck of a game as well. So stick around if you're watching on Channel 28 Think TV or just click on the, what's, what's YouTube, the, the related videos? You should, there should be like a related video. I with believe the that's how it yeah. works out. I, I'm, this, this YouTube thing, kids, uh, what is this YouTube <laughs> thing that you speak of? Hey, just because I can't describe YouTube perfectly. <laughs> kind of show my age. <laughs> so, YouTube.com slash Lawn College. Where all our videos of our games are shown. And exciting news. I think we're going to debut a new show that's going to highlight some of the women's basketball uh, team, so be aware of that in the future. So, studio shows are going to be coming up in this spring semester, and we're excited because this spring semester has been good for Solana College Sports Network with you yep. guys getting an opportunity to talk a little bit more behind the, the, the mic. Yes, definitely, and also bringing in new people, it makes the, uh, the experience of broadcasting so much more better. When you have a lot of people, it just creates an even better environment. Yes, I love teaching the new people all the things I was taught last semester. It definitely feels good, and it's just a good um, it's a good class to take if you're interested in sports or just wet, um, using cameras and talking, period. As Very Carl fun class as well, too. Yeah, as Carlton throws that out of bounds. All the new, some new camera people we have are Dell and Mike Keys doing a great job on this broadcast. And if you're interested in taking, Com 75 is the class to take if you want to take sports broadcasting. We meet every Wednesday at 1 o'clock, 1 to 4, and then we go and uh, fulfill hours at all of Solano's ball games, and that's how you get credit for the class. So if you want to get college credit and attend some Solano games for free and enjoy some sports, Com 75 is the class to take. As Trayvon King hits the lefty layup, so 83-56 with 2-18 remaining. JT Robinson over at Princeton. Smith now. It's all a little content to just swing it around as JT Robinson tries the three. Not able to hit it. McAllister gets the ball for Merritt. I think they'll use a little clock here with two minutes and counting. Pope with a pull-up jumper. So Ronnie Pope hits another shot. So the small lineup of Brinston, Sewell, and Smith with JT Robinson and Jesse Carey. A little step back from Smith. Rebound by Jesse Carey. Doing a good job on the offensive rebounding for Jesse Carey. That's his third or fourth. And Sewell with a nice take. Mm, a nice layup, Sewell. He contorted his body in there, kept the ball from being knocked away from there, and laid it up. Yes, that's what you call an acrobatic layup. Um, as you can see, if you watch the NBA, Derrick Rose and Damian Lillard are very good at those type of layups. Yeah, very impressive body control by Lejean Sewell. And good defense, because he knocked it out of the hands of Anthony Tabor. So Sewell not giving up just because Solano is down by 27 with a minute left. So JT Robinson with a minute and counting. Trying to set up an offensive possession and these, these late game possessions should not be a thing to waste because 
uh, anytime you're on a in-game action, you can learn something. And Donovan Smith gets the good layup. So good offensive possession from Solano. 85 to 60 now. With 40 seconds and counting, this should be Merritt's last possession. Should they choose to wind down the clock? They're going to call timeout first. I question that timeout. I mean, the game's almost over. You have a big lead. I really see no reason in calling a timeout with 34.2 seconds. Well, I think it was to get his um, starters out, I guess, you know, to get them some more rest for the next game. But a funny thing I was looking at, if each team scores four more points, then you get the same score that they had from the last game. Wow. So well, the world of oddities there. Uh, four more points for Merritt and four more points for Solano because Merritt won 89-64 to 64 in Oakland on January 13th. So, hey, <laughs> stranger things have happened. <laughs> Unfortunately, almost like deja vu for the Falcons. Yeah, that's deja vu you don't want, though. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. So DJ Kennedy going to take the ball out. And my theory would be that Mary took that timeout just because the coach wants, like I, like I had stated earlier, that you don't waste possessions at this point. Like every possession you get in game can be used as a learning tool. So perhaps he wants his guys to run something specific that they can work on. As the post move into Dan and Lemon, the backup forward. So it's going to be 15 seconds of counting, so the shot clock's going to be turned off. Slot being hounded by Merritt still. Sewell going to drive, gets the ball, acrobatic layup. Tipped out, Snell checks the clock, pump fakes. And that three-point shot is going to be short, so the final score not quite the same as on January 13th. The final score is going to be Merritt 87, Solano 60. So guys, Merritt, really a balanced game on offense. So Marvell, what what do you have to say for the recap of this game? Well, honestly, I wasn't there the first game, but I can imagine that they pretty much did the same thing. They used height to their advantage. They were able to out-rebound the Falcons. And, you know, just as I said earlier, they kind of ran a Spurs-like offense. They kind of shared the ball, passed it around, and found the wide open men, as well as also get it to their big men as well. So, yeah, Merritt. Really good team basketball. And Anthony from the Solano side of things, this gets them down to 6-16 six and 16 on the year. What does Solano learn from this game? What do you think the takeaway is from this game? Well, they've improved offensively, but they, they definitely need to step the defense up more. And you will see they, they won't be losing by 20 or more points if they um, improved defensively. So improvements on the Solano side could be made definitely in the future so thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network here in the Solano Gymnasium the, your final score is Merit 87 Solano 60 thanks for watching